Yeah, I would like to report on a study that we conducted over 12 years on, on a, a young triple star system, namely GW Orionis. And we also employed a, a wide range of high level resolution observation techniques and also theorists as well as observers. So um, I would like to first acknowledge here my collaborators for this uh, um, long-term effort. Yes, yeah, so premium sequence multiples, such as the systems that we studied here, provide an excellent laboratory to study disk hydrodynamics. And of course, that's also very relevant for uh, planet formation studies, because in the case of planet formation, we see these uh, structures like these rings in, in young disks and then need to use hydrodynamic simulations in order to deduce the properties of these unseen bodies. And so premium sequence uh, multiples, on the other hand, have um, um, well-defined orbits, if, um, or at least the possibility to get these well-defined orbits, and therefore they're really a, um, a great opportunity to study disk hydrodynamics under very well-defined conditions. And also, they provide a mechanism for potentially moving disk material out of, a, out of the plane, which could be needed to uh, explain the obliquities that we observe in planetary systems. And finally, there are also um, planets that have been found around multiple systems. Um, um, such as Kepler-34, for instance. And so it, I think it is important to find for the modelers now um, a system where, um, where we know as much as possible and um, a system that just has the right um, conditions to study these hydrodynamic effects. So I think ideally, for instance, you would like some, uh, some object that has well-defined global properties, such as a well-known um, distance, um, a good determine dust mass. You would also want well-characterized orbits, which means radial velocity and astrometry. You would like to um, constrain the three-dimensional shape of the disk. And so uh, you would, you would um, like the system to be just at the right uh, orbital separation and uh, maybe uh, eccentricity or mutual inclination to study certain hydrodynamic effects. And um, one of these hydrodynamic effects that has been proposed in the literature, but that has not been seen in action so far, is, um, is a disk tearing effect um, that is proposed to happen if, um, if you have a binary whose orbital plane is misaligned with respect to the plane of the disk. And the theory prediction, such as shown here, uh, is that uh, this uh, the gravitational torque from these misaligned binaries can then tear the disk apart and, uh, and produce this processing rings that have separated from the, from the disk and, um, and move now independently around uh, the system. And so we focused on one of these systems, um, namely GW Orionis. Uh, it's a well-known um, spectroscopic triple system that has already been um, discovered back in the, um, I think in the 80s, with the first spectroscopic observations. And then a third um, a star has been discovered with interferometry by Berger et al. 2011. And also at submillimeter um, wavelengths, it's known that there is a, a disk around uh, this object, a rather extended disk. And so we, we monitored the, uh, the system with um, interferometry over the last 11 years. And um, this slide just demonstrates how much progress there has been in, uh, in infra interferometry over this time, because in the beginning we had to uh, use a uh, UTs with amber uh, to observe the system and then uh, gravity allowed us to observe it also with the smaller 80 telescopes and just recently with a, a Merck X instrument at Chara we can even do it now with a, a one meter telescopes and with six telescopes at a time to uh, observe uh, the system and get astrometry uh, for this for the triple star system and for the um, also some disk constraints. So for instance, um, here's the left are some images from these different epochs where you can see the stars moving. And um, uh, I show you also the visibilities that we got in the thermal infrared, including uh, Keck or Petromosking interferometry, such uh, tells us that there is some, um, a circumtriple disk as well from the flux ratios that we determine here between the um, inner binary and the tertiary. We did use that there is some a circumtriple, a circum, circum tertiary disk. And from uh, N-band interferometry, we also did use it as a circumtriple disk around the, uh, the whole system. But at the moment, the geometry of, the, of this um, 
uh, this inner disk components is, is still um, relatively poorly constrained because of the limited UV coverage, uh, in particular with MIDI. And so in terms of orbit, we get here these uh, constraints. So we have deduced um, 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 the orbit both of the inner pair and then of the tertiary. And we see that that's, uh, in particular the, um, the tertiary is, is on, a, also on an eccentric orbit with eccentricity 0.38. And of course, we also get uh, dynamical masses. And so we have now a very well constrained system with three dimensional orbit, orbits and um, dynamical masses as well. And then in the, um, in the sub millimeter, we see um, uh, the uh, rings on, on larger scales. So there has been a paper by, uh, by B et al. that shows uh, these three rings. And then we, we see it here at a high resolution with ALMA as well, where we also detect um, here's a circum tertiary and the circum binary disk and sub millimeter emission, as you can see here. And the most intriguing feature maybe is that the, um, that the inner ring at 40 or 40 AU is, um, is at a different inclination than the outer disk, as you can see here from, from this uh, circular shape of the inner ring, while the outer uh, rings have this strong ellipticity. And so we model this. And so this gives us um, here the radii and so various inclinations of the different components. And we combine this then with, with scatter light imaging, where we see some shadows that are cast by this, um, by this misaligned inner ring on, um, on the outer disk and also on a warped disk surface. So you see that here's a, that's a, uh, the shadow here uh, has, a, has a certain curvature to it. So inside a 40 astronomical unit, is, it's bending upwards. And we, we model this by, um, um, but with this geometry here, where we have this misaligned ring seen under um, so some inclination and also with an intrinsic um, eccentricity. And this, uh, this ring is casting the, sh the shadow both here to the south, uh, southeast and to the northwest. And also in, in line emission, we, we see that there is excess um, CO emission at the northern part of the ring. So this is also nicely reproduced by the model because um, uh, we see hot gas at the inner surface of the, of the ring. And, and since we, we look onto the ring um, as, as illustrated here, so the northern side is, uh, is, um, is the side where we can see the inner part of the, of the ring. And therefore that's where the hot, hot uh, hot gases that is heated by the star, while on the southern part of the ring, we, uh, we, we only see the colder outer part of this optically thick ring. Yeah, here's a little movie that um, shows basically uh, the, the whole geometry that we did use, including this disk warp. And um, yeah, the line of sight is here to the always at the top. So we're basically rotating around the system um, always um, with the axis towards Earth uh, vertically. And in order to um, determine what causes the, all, all these uh, misalignments in the, in the disk, we, uh, we then uh, conducted SPH hydrodynamic simulations based on the actual measured orbits. So we have now um, this fully characterized system with, uh, with all known uh, orbits. And we also know the, the global property of the disk, such as the disk mass and the orientation of the outer disk, and can therefore do forward modeling uh, with SPH simulations. And you see that, um, that we can uh, reproduce here um, this disk tearing effect where, where the gravitational torque from the misaligned triple star system has torn the disk apart and has um, uh, has caused this misaligned ring that is uh, now processing around the system uh, on time scales of, of a few a thousand years. So that's why we think it's the kind of the first observational um, um, direct observation of, of the disk tearing effect um, and a really interesting system now for modelers to, uh, uh, to, do, uh, to do this kind of forward modeling and to determine a fundamental disk property such as uh, such as the viscosities that could be constrained from, from such uh, observations. So to summarize, I think GW Orionis is a really um, beautiful benchmark system for studying such hydrodynamic effects. We also see here the, the disk tearing effect in action, where this um, gravitational torque has torn out this, uh, this ring. 
and there is um, at least 30 or Earth masses of dust in that ring. So there is also a potential for forming planets in this, this misaligned ring that would, uh, would then be on highly oblique orbits with respect to the uh, inner system, which um, is one of the few mechanisms that could also produce uh, this um, planets on oblique orbits at wide orbital separations. And for the study, it has really been crucial to combine different wavelength regimes, namely the near infrared to measure the astrometry of the stars, then the thermal infrared to see the inner disk components, the circumbinary, circumtertiary, and circumtriple disk, and then scattered line and submillimeter to uh, determine the three-dimensional shape of the, um, of the warped outer disk. Um, and um, by combining the shadow imaging and the thermal light imaging, we could um, get the three-dimensional shape of that um, um, of the warp and, and of the misaligned inner ring. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you very much, Stefan. Um, I have a look in Slack right now. Ah, yeah, there is one question here um, by Michael Stasek. Um, Does the misaligned inner circumbinary disk help to shrink the inner binary orbits, enhancing the tidal friction in cycles induced by the tertiary? And would that be measurable? Should I read um, it again? <laughs> okay, so uh, so circum with circum binary. Uh, could, could you specify what what you mean with circum binary disk? Um, because there is um, circum binary disk is, is open to astronomical units, so that's really gives us in a in a component. Um, I mean the inner disk. Okay, so it's a misaligned ring. I was seeing it was Alma, or the missile, is a, or this uh, in a circum binary disk here. Oh, this circum exactly. I mean, you have a tertiary system, you have misaligned tertiary system, so you have the cosi cycle at works, right? Yes. And so and in the inner system, you have enhanced tidal friction. So maybe this is now a very quick process. That's my question. Uh -huh. Well, the system is already uh, about a million years old, so I think it, it is in a in a stable hierarchical configuration right now. Um, um, but we haven't done anybody um, forward simulations over uh, 10 or hundred thousands of years. So, so this would be something interesting still to check, but um, I, I expect it to be a stable configuration right now. Okay, and then there's another question by um, Abigail Frost. Um, if planets were to form within the disk, would they be at risk of being thrown from the system or being torn apart by further dynamical interactions? Um, again, that's, that's something where, where, where one um, could do more, more theoretical work on, but, uh, the, um, but in our SPH simulation, uh, we, we find that this that this ring is, is stable, so this, this seems to be a stable configuration uh, of of this uh, ring at forty astronomical units, and um, and it's we ran it for for a few ten thousand years, so so it's at least stable over that time, and mm -hmm. um, it's plausible that the planet could form there that that would then also be in a in a stable configuration. Okay, thank you. And then the last question is from Nicolas Coelho. Um, are these stars actively accreting, accreting disk material? And if so, was it possible to measure the stellar accretion rates? Uh, yes, there is, um, there is accretion as indicated by um, hydrogen recombination lines. And so we, um, we also conducted uh, cryospectral astrometry where we can separate the, uh, the accretion contributions from the, um, from the inner binary and from the tertiary. Um, and we find that most of the accretion is, is uh, happening onto the tertiary, which again is something that is predicted by hydrodynamic simulations. Um, um, and yeah, so the so next uh, step is, is also to compare directly the, uh, the accretion rates uh, potentially as a function of uh, orbital phase um, and to do a direct comparison with, uh, with such SPH simulation where, where you can also predict uh, the accretion rates as a function of, of orbital phase. Mm 